I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. Because joy is where you are. Peace is where you are. Love is where you are. Oh, everything I need is where you are. So I have to be there. I want to be there. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Once again, we want to say good morning from Agape Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church here in Hope Mills, North Carolina, where love is what we do. We just want to thank you for joining us on today. Amen. 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 And we want to thank God first and foremost, just because of who he is, not because of what he's done, but because of who he is. Hallelujah. We thank God for the leadership in this house. Amen. It's Clergy Appreciation Month. And I hope he knows it, but we appreciate our pastor, amen? And our first lady, amen? Our first family. The things that they do to help us as a body. The wisdom. The wisdom. Amen? Amen. We want to just bless them on this morning. And I want to thank my own first lady, amen? Amen, Reverend Tadika Williams, amen, amen. I love my wife, love my baby. She got, she got, she got, she got to put up with me, so. I got to give her her props for her props, it's due. Amen, amen to all the ministers and to our uh, band, our minister, our uh, minister of music, uh, brother Desmond Sanders, my friend. For all the hard work he puts into this ministry, to our band, to William, Mac, to uh, Matthew. I mean, just coming out here uh, tirelessly. They came out here and practiced like three hours just, just a band. Amen. Trying to get ready to do God's business. To our choir, Sister LaRonda, uh, Sister Diane, Mother Sharon, her absence, my own seed, my son Gabriel. Yeah. Um, just for constantly being faithful to what God has called us to do. So we just thank everyone. And we thank you, those of you out there watching us via Facebook or, or through our website. Uh, we thank you for just joining us today. And I pray to God that something that is said, something that is said will help you and be in God's will. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now. Father God, because there's none like you in all the earth. So right now, Father God, as your word is about to come forth, move Kenny out the way. Hide me behind your cross, Father God. Let this word be a rhema word for your people, Father God, for a time such as this. I ask you, Lord, that whoever's listening right now, Father God, is listening with an open heart, with an open mind. Father God, that you may dwell within them. So, Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Let's go ahead and dive into the word on today. And we're going to do this a little bit different on today but as i was thinking and meditating on god's word and and and, and what uh, uh the people needed at this point in time um god just really took me back to um the vision that our that our man of god and i do believe by and I, and, and and we're going to show this a little bit later but by divine providence the 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 the, the mission and the vision he gave us for this year because uh, on December 31st, 2019, about 11.59 p.m., people all over the world were excited about the new year, excited about 2020. You know, you can do so much with 2020, 2020 vision, 2020 hindsight, 
2020, but it was a new year. It was a new beginning, and, 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 and with each new year comes a, a new opportunity, a new hope, a new enthusiasm, and, and like I said, in, in this case, a new vision. And although we are in the last Sunday of October now, this year has seemed to go on forever. Uh, our normal is no longer normal. Uh, we are continuing to fight through a global pandemic, something that we have not seen within our lifetime in, in this generation. Uh, 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 we used to exchange hugs and kisses. I mean, we used to have hugs and kisses. Now we're doing fist bumps and airwaves. Um, We've gone from uh, vacationing to quarantine. Uh, our homes have become our offices. And Lysol is the must-have product on the market. You can't find it in the stores. Not to mention, that's just the pandemic. Not to mention, y'all, we've gone through earthquakes. When was the last time we had an earthquake in North Carolina that you could actually feel? I remember uh, that Sunday morning, uh, Brother Sanders, who's, who's driving all the way from Charlotte to come be our minister of music, he called me that morning. He was like, dude, we just had an earthquake. And I'm like, huh? In North Carolina? We've got wildfires in California. We've had a record number of hurricanes this year to the point to where they had to stop naming them and start going to the Greek alphabet. And, and, and I think within the next 24 hours, we get one more, which will break the record. Zeta. I ain't used the Greek alphabet so, uh, so long. I'm like, come on now. But we've had all this stuff happen in 2020, not to mention social injustice and social unrest, uh, 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 and then to top it off, we are now in election season. We're going to get to that in a minute. And it's an election like no other, and guess what, y'all? It's just October. It's just October. We're about to go into November, but all of this has happened in the span of a year, and our normal is not normal. Our reality is not the same reality. And, 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 and we are all beginning to suffer for what I call the virus fatigue. Because everybody's ready to get back out. Everybody's ready for a change. And if you continue to look at the news, it's like you thought a change was coming, but it seems like the change ain't the change that you thought that was coming. The numbers are going back up and, 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 and people going through all this stuff. If you really begin to think about it, because you're saturated with it on social media, on the news, everywhere you turn around, you're talking about pandemic, election, earthquakes, uh, fires. You're talking about this, 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 protest, social unrest, things happening to people that shouldn't be happening to people, and it will eventually make your head spin to the point that you don't know where you're going and you can't see your eyes begin to get blurry. It's got us so messed up that we take our eyes and our purpose, take our eyes off our purpose, and we place our eyes on our situation. 2020. So before we dive in, we're going to do this a little different because I'm going to show you that even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of the mess, even in the midst of everything that is going on, God is about to give you a vision screen. He's about to give you a vision check. If you need glasses, he's about to give you some glasses. If you need contacts, he's about to give you some contacts. He's about to make it clear 
again. So the title of this message is 2020 Vision for a 2020 Decision. And just prefacing, I'm not talking about this election. Because everybody out there probably think, oh, but he about to start talking politics. Nope, not, not at all. Maybe a little bit. All right. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have uh, Reverend Williams. She's going to, because we're going to walk the scripture here this morning. And, and we're going to go through, and Reverend Williams is going to uh, uh, read the scriptures, and then we're going to talk, and then we're going we're gonna to really dive into this, and then we're going home. Amen? Amen. All right, so Joshua 24 and 1. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel, for their heads, for their judges, and for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. All right, let's stop right there. So in order for you to get your vision right, we got to have some leadership. Whether you're the leadership in your home, whether it's the leadership of our churches, whether it's the leadership of our nation. Somebody's got to bring everybody together. Amen. And we've got to begin to talk about some things. Well, in this case, Joshua brought all the tribes. He brought the tribes of Israel to this place called Sheshem. Now, Sheshem is important because uh, it was uh, the center of the land between Mount Ebal and Mount uh, Gerzim. Sheshem also has some real spiritual significance. The Lord appeared to Abraham in Genesis 12 and 6 and 7 and promised the land to his descendants. After this, Abraham built an altar. So here's what I'm saying. Sometimes when your vision begins to get out of whack, what God has got to do is bring you back to the place of the promise. He had to bring them back to Sheshem to show them what he had for them. Now, what you think about this, at this time, they're finally about to walk into their promise. Let me tell you something. Despite this pandemic, despite what you're going through, despite what you may be feeling on the inside, I declare and I decree. Some of you are about to walk into your promised land, but you got to make sure that you don't let your vision get off of what God has called you in your purpose. So he called them. He called them back. He said, I need y'all to come on and, and I'm going to take you to a place of significance. Y'all remember that song. I know Pastor does because he, you know, he, he, he can get them older songs. But this is one of my favorite pastor when it says, take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. For some of you, your prayer needs to be right now. God, take me back. Take me back to where I first believed. Take me back to where I could see you. Take me back to where my vision wasn't blurry. Take me back so that I can get myself straight because I know you got something in store for me despite what we're going through. He's got to take us back. Take us back. So what he did was he brought him and took him back. Start verse 2. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, dwelt on the other side of the river in old times, and they served other gods. Keep on. Then I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river, led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his descendants and gave him Isaac. To Isaac, I gave Jacob mm -hmm. and Esau. To Esau, I gave the mountains of Seir to possess. But Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Also, I sent Moses and Aaron and I plagued Egypt according to what I did among them. All right, so here we go. So... At this time, what Jacob is doing is he's reminding them through the divine voice of God where they've come out of. Now, watch this. Their generation, the generation that he's speaking to right now, 
was not the generation that went through this. Okay, so let me tell you something. It's important that the older generation teach the newer generation about having to go through some things, about having to have to deal with some stuff. So what's happening now is we're, we're not passing the information from one generation to the next generation. So guess what? So if I'm not passing it to my children, my children are not going to know my God. So I got to tell them what my God has done for me. We got to teach them. And what he had to do is he had to bring them back and say, look, let me, let me tell you what God's already done. Okay, let's go. We're going to move on. Amen. Afterward, I brought you out. Then I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea. And the Egyptians pursued your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. Keep going. So they cried out to the Lord. And he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, brought the sea upon them, and covered them. And your eyes saw what I did in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Then you dwelt in the wilderness for a long time. Stop right there. All right. So this, he told them, he said, I, I brought you out of all this stuff. I brought your forefathers out of all this stuff. But this last line. It says, then you dwelt in the wilderness for a long time because the simple fact of it was, was that that generation wouldn't do what God told them to do. So they were the ones that were supposed to go into the promised land, but because they couldn't do what God told them to do, what he did was he had them wandering around the wilderness for 40 years till he killed them all off. And what we don't want to happen in our society is because we won't stand on God's principles. We won't do what God tells us to do. We don't want them to kill our generation off because we can't tell the new generation what they need to know. But he told them, you got to remember to get your sight back. You have to remember. Scientifically, what happens is when uh, somebody may be born, born with sight and then they lose their sight. Their memory can still help them see what they can't see right now. Some of y'all are spiritually blind. So what you got to do is ask God to help you in your memory. Your memory, your memory, your memory. You got to remember what God has done for you. You got to remember how he brought you out. But right now, Joseph is talking about the past generation. So I can remember my grandmama talking to me about sharecropping, talking to me about working in tobacco fields, talking to me about the things that they had to deal through in the civil rights movement, how they had to take abuse and take this and take that and do this and do that and 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 and, and they begin to t so if i wasn't there at least i had the understanding of what it was that they had to go through go to verse eight and i brought you into the land of the amorites so right now hold up Right now, he's starting to talk to this generation. All right. I want y'all to, to hear that. He's talking to this generation. Who dwelt on the other side of the Jordan, and they fought with you. But I gave them into your hand that you might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose to make war against Israel and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not listen to Beor. I'm sorry, I would not, but I would not listen to Balaam, Balaam. Therefore, he continued to bless you. So I delivered you out of his hand. You ain't going to stop me from getting this word out day. Amen. So what he told them was, he said, look, now I'm talking about you. 
I'm talking about the things you went through. I'm talking about the things that you've had to deal with. I'm talking about when you had enemies on all sides. I'm talking about when they were trying to destroy you because they were afraid of you. Let me tell you something. Sometimes God has such an anointing on you that people are afraid of you. They don't want to deal with you because your anointing brings about change. So here's the thing. Come on, Reverend Williams. I remember you talking about it, but I'm going to put a little twist on it. What ended up happening was Balaam went to curse them, but then he had to turn around and bless them. Somebody ought to give God a praise because when they try to hurt you, when they try to destroy you, when God says, I'm going to bless my people, it's a non-negotiable praise. It's a non-negotiable blessing. It's a non-negotiable. I'm going to take it and I'm going to do it and it ain't the devil in hell that can stop it. Pastor Kemp said last week that whatsoever God will, if he wants to bless you, guess what? He going to bless you. If he wants to keep you, guess what? He's going to keep you. If he wants to make sure that you're taken care of, guess what? He's going to take care of you. And it don't matter if they try to curse you. It don't matter what your vision is telling you right now. It doesn't matter. Go ahead, to verse 11. Then you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho. And the men of Jericho fought against you. Uh-huh. Also, the Amorites, mm-hmm. the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Jerjesites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. But I delivered them into your hand. I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out from before you. Also the two kings of the Amorites, but not with your sword or with your bow. I have given you a land for which you did not labor and cities which you did not build. And you dwell in them. You eat of the vineyards and olive groves, which you did not plant. Somebody ought to give God a praise right about now. Because it's some things that you didn't deserve. It's some things that, that they thought you weren't supposed to have. It's some things that you're inheriting right now that you didn't have to work for. God continue to bless you with. God continue to give it to you. So what you need to do is give him a praise because he still looked out for you. Now therefore. Not done. Not done yet. Okay. We going, babe. We going. Here is where I'm going to finally talk about this, this election I I'm not really the political guy I got some I got my some my, my wife is one she, she, she look at more than I do my, my pastor he he kind of you know he keep he keep me abreast of some things but I had an opportunity to start watching some of these campaign uh, commercials and it made me think one side is saying one thing one side is saying something else one side is saying what one side is saying is not true and the other one saying it is true so then people have to decide what you believe is or is not true okay so here's what I'm saying Right here, Joshua was a wonderful campaign manager. So what he did was he talked about the ultimate candidate. I'm not talking about Republican. I'm not talking about Democrat. I'm not talking about president, senator, senate, your local commissioners. But I'm talking about the one that sits on high and looks down low. What I'm saying is this 
candidate that I'm talking about. Whenever he makes a promise, it's promise made. Reverend Brown, promise kept. You don't have to worry about whether he's telling the truth. Why? Because he's a man that he should not lie. So somebody ought to give God praise that I got a candidate. No matter who they put in the White House, no matter who they put in the governor's house, my candidate, my candidate, my candidate is in control of it all. So if he's in control, it does not matter who's in the White House, who's in the governor's house. It might not even matter who's in your house. But God is the one. Ultimate candidate. The problem is, and, and listen, listen to what I'm saying carefully. I'm not saying we have to do our civic duties. In other words, we have to make sure that we go out and vote. Because guess what? Let's go back to that history. The history lesson was your ancestors fought. Your ancestors died. Your ancestors went through some things that you will have that right. In other words, voting is your inheritance. So you need to walk in your inheritance. It's a sad thing when you got somebody that worked hard to make sure you have what you needed and you won't use it because... Your vision ain't right. <sighs> a 2020 vision for a 2020 decision. Let's go to verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Stop right there. See, there's a couple things you got to look at. Joshua first gave them a command. In order for you to get your vision right, you got to listen to the doctor. So if the doctor says, wear your glasses, guess what? Wear your glasses. So that's a command. If the doctor says, put, put your contacts in, well, put your contacts in. If the doctor says you need to do this, 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 and this, then guess what? Be obedient and follow the main command. But then he talked about choices. And this is where some people get all messed up because lots of folks like choices. See, but what he told him, he says, look, uh, you can do one or two things. I'm telling you, you need to serve the Lord. Now, at this point, God had brought them out of all this stuff and they are about to dwell in the land that God promised. They are about to get the inheritance that God promised. Some of you are about to get some things, even though you might not see it right now, that God promised. But what happens is we begin to look at what he promised versus the one who promised it. Oh, somebody ought to give God a praise because sometimes our vision is looking too much at the car. Our vision is looking too much at the house. Our vision is looking too much at, at, at the mate that you want or the baby that you want or this, that, and the other. And God is about to give you that thing. But the problem is you're more concerned about that thing than you are So he gave him a choice. You can serve the Lord or these other gods. Now, watch this. We talk a lot about generational curses, and a lot of people miss that. He says, you, in verse 15, if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose yourself this day whom you're going to serve. 
Choose this day whose side you on. Choose this day whether you're with me or you're against me. Choose this day whether you're going to serve me or you're going to deny me. Choose this day because there's a choice that has to be made. But with that choice, he gave him another history lesson. The other history lesson was he had already brought their fathers out of pagan gods and other gods and other idols and other things. So it's generational. So in other words, he had already delivered them out of it. But because they couldn't be obedient, then what happens is their seed had to turn around and go through it again because we didn't teach the lesson the first time because we didn't help and take our children to get their eyes checked. We didn't help get them a vision check. We didn't help them to learn about our God. Huh. But then he says, mm. he said, oh, you can serve these gods that's in the place that you are about to dwell. Some of you are about to get a financial breakthrough, but are you going to serve the money? Some of you are about to get that husband or that wife you wanted, but are you going to serve them? Some of you are about to get the job you've been asking God for, those natural things. But like Pastor said last week, are you going to serve those idols? Are you going to make your own idol? Are you going to do those? No, are against the God that has delivered you into your Canaan. The thing about it is, right now, this day, you gotta choose who you serve. And I like what Joshua said. And I'm gonna give this advice to preachers, pastors, those people who want to really tell people the truth about the word of God. Sometimes folks are going to listen and sometimes folks are not. Sometimes folks are going to do. Sometimes folks are not. But let me tell you what you need to do. We got to be like Joshua and we got to say as for me and my house and we're going to serve the Lord. I don't care what you do but as for me and mine we're going to serve him. As for me and mine we're we're going to worship him. As for me and mine, we're going to bless his holy and righteous name. And he will converse. As for me and mine, I can't tell you what to do. I can't tell you who to vote for. I can't tell you. But as for me and mine, let me tell you who really got my vote. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Because I know he's the one that will never let me down. He'll never fail me. He'll bring me out even when I jack up. He'll help me even when I'm lost. He will give me sight when I cannot see. He's never broken a promise. Because he's got a promise and he's not going to lie to me. So I want to bless him. Problem is, you too worried about the candidates. I got the ultimate candidate. Because quite frankly, after November 3rd, it's going to be what it's going to be. But I'm going to tell you something. My God was here before there ever was a president. My God was here before there ever was a government. My God was here before there ever was a tree or plant or whatever. My God was here. And since he's from everlasting to everlasting, I'm going to serve in him. Folks getting all stressed out and worried about, about an election. And don't get me twisted. It's important. But we got to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. And we got to render unto God what is God's. 
So in other words, you cast your vote for whichever candidate you best think fits what needs to be done. But the simple fact of it is, my God said, if my people that are called by my name will turn from their wicked ways, I will bless them if they humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways. I'll bless them. See, the simple fact of it is, Joe Biden really does have it right. It's a moral thing. The simple fact of it is, it's about who you decide to serve. So your 2020 decision ain't got nothing to do with the president. It ain't got nothing to do with the governor. It ain't got nothing to do with whoever it is you already done voted for. Your 2020 desist decision is, is that are you going to choose to be on the Lord's side? Are you going to choose to serve the master? Are you going to choose to be with him who will never fail you? We almost done. We almost done. Go to, go, uh, we got to understand. There's a decision to be made. And Joshua told them, he said, look, you're about to go into your promise. You're about to go into your blessing. But see, I got to tell you some things. In other words... I don't know if y'all watched the debate the other night. I actually watched, like, watching the after debate. The after debate is when they start to fact check people. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 watch this. Joshua has to fact check the people. Go ahead. Verse 16. So the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Stop right there. So they decided. They made a choice and they said, far be it for us that we're going to serve these other gods. I'm going to serve the Lord. Go ahead. For the Lord, our God, is he who brought us and our fathers up from up out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. from the house of bondage, uh -huh. who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed. So what they said was they acknowledged the history of their forefathers because they weren't there. The only two that were about to cross over that were there were Joshua and Caleb. That's it. Everybody else was gone. So in other words, they listened to what they knew about what God had done for mom and them and daddy and them and growing and them. And so then they say, and then you preserved us. So in other words, this generation, what we got to do is we got to tell our children how God has preserved us, how he has kept us, how that when I went through, sometimes you got to have that conversation and sometimes you got to be honest because, you know, you know, sometimes, uh, uh, my, my, especially my boys, they think daddy know everything. And I have to tell them sometimes, I don't know because I really don't know. But let me tell you somebody that does know. So I tell them, you got to pray about it. You got to talk to him for yourself. And he preserved them among all the people that they passed through. Everybody that tried to knock them off. God says, nah, 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 nah. That's my chosen. You can't knock them off. See, some of y'all are God's chosen. You're God's anointed. They can't knock you off unless you let them deter you. There is a difference. They can't knock you down. But what they can do is send you in a different direction if you let them. They can throw a roadblock. Go ahead. Amen. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people including the Amorites who dwelt in the land. We also will serve the Lord for he is our God. Keep going. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. 
he will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. <laughs> Hold up right there. See, some people might not like this, but really, in all honesty, we ain't fit to serve the Lord. In other words, the Bible says that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. The simple fact of it is, is that I'm a sin saved by grace. And because of the fact that he already knew that I wasn't going to be able to do it, what he did, Pastor, we talked about it in Bible study. In the beginning was God. It was all free. And God dwelled the earth. But once he saw that we weren't going to be able to do it, he sent his son, that his son would die, that we might be saved, that we might be forgiven, that we would have chances to get it right, that we could be reconciled. Somebody ought to give him praise because God loved you enough that even when you couldn't do it, even when we mess up, he still got us. Even when we're jacked up, he still got us. Even when we fall short, he still got us. Somebody ought to give God a praise. Even in the midst of this pandemic, he still got us. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after he has done you good. And the people said to Joshua, no, but we will serve the Lord. All right, stop right there. Do not think just because God has granted you grace. His grace is sufficient. His forgiveness, he throws your sins and the seal of forgiveness not for you but for his own sake see the simple fact of it is is don't think you can play with God and continue to do wrong and continue to not do his statutes and continue to walk in your mess because eventually he's gonna say that was the choice the 2020 decision that you made so Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves Uh oh, Go ahead. that you have chosen the Lord for yourselves to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. All right, here we go. So the question I got to ask you in, in, in the sanctuary, the question I got to ask you out in Facebook land is that, can you be a witness? In other words, can you witness that you said? that you were going to serve the Lord can you witness that you said can you fact check yourself to for those things that people can't see in the dark can you fact check yourself for those things that you've done to other folks can you fact check yourself because guess what God is calling 2020 vision a vision check but the vision check starts in the mirror The vision check starts in the mirror. Can you look at yourself and say, I'm a witness. I can look at myself and say, I've done wrong. I can look at myself and say, God, I know I ain't always done right. But I also can look at myself and say, even though I fell down, I got up. But I didn't get up by myself. I was like Peter seeking in the water when I began to take my eyes off of you. But I was smart enough to cry out, God, can you help me? And I say, yeah, because you reached down and you picked me up. I say, yeah, because you you pull me out of darkness. I thank you because you changed my line of sight. I thank you because you kept me. Can you be a witness? Go ahead. Huh. Now, therefore, he said, put away the foreign gods which are among you and incline your heart to the Lord. All right. So here you go. He's telling you what to do. What did he say? Put that mess away. Put the junk away. Put those things that are hindering you away. Whatever your idol is. If it's your money, get your mind off your money. If it's your honey, get your mind off your honey. If it's your situation, you might have to take your mind off your situation and put your heart in the hands of the one who's able to mend broken hearts who's able to fix 
breaks broken pieces, who's able to renew broken things. Uh, and the people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve, and his voice we will obey. Keep going. So Keep Joshua going. made a covenant with the people that day and made for them a statute and an ordinance. So right now, they made, he made a covenant with the people. Your decision is, are you going to make the covenant? The covenant, the covenant, the covenant between Israel and God was that the people would worship him and obey him alone. The purpose was to become a holy nation that would influence the rest of the world. The conquest of Canaan was just a means to achieve the purpose. But Israel became preoccupied with the land and lost sight of God. Here's what I'm here to tell you, and I'm about to sit down. Many churches right now, they make this mistake as well. The congregations are more important, are more consumed with the new facility. Some of the pastors, pastor, I'm going to have to go there. I hope they don't dislike me for this one. But some of the pastors are more about getting on TV. They're more about people seeing them. They're more about getting their names in the paper than they are about serving God. See, the simple fact of it is if we don't begin to serve our God, then the things you see will continue to happen. You got to understand that he's not a God, that he should lie. Then Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of the Lord. <laughs> and he gave him a large stone and he set it up there under the oak that was by the sanctuary. And Joshua said to the people, behold, this stone Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Shall be a witness to us. For he has heard of all the words of the people who spoke, who he spoke to us. It shall therefore be a witness to you, lest you deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart each to his own inheritance. Here's what I'm trying to say is that we don't know. <laughs> what tomorrow may hold. We don't know what tomorrow may bring. Uh, this decision that you got to make right now has nothing to do with your candidate, your party, your anything. Right now, we have to decide if we're going to serve God, if we're going to believe God. And what he did was he gave us a stone. It was the stone that the builders rejected. He also gave us a manual. He told us that this is all you gotta do is read my word because my word should never come back to me void. Here's what I'm telling you. Get your vision right. Get your mind right. Put it on those things that it needs to be put on, which is God. It's a 2020 vision for a 2020 decision. Pastor, I know God gave you that vision. And let me tell you why. We didn't know at the beginning of the year. Pastor Carmen said, this is what the vision going to be. First thing I did was start making posters. Didn't know what it really meant. But let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you something out there. The vision here is Agape. At Agape is 2020 vision perfect line of sight towards Christ. The simple fact of it is if your 2020 ain't on Christ, if your 2020 ain't on the Savior, if your 2020 ain't on what God has called you to do, I don't care if it's in the midst of a pandemic, guess what? He provided another way because his ministry is still going forth. We might have to stay in the house, but I can say in my house, we stand in the house with some food. We got food on the table. We got clothes on our back. Hey, we're breathing. 2020 vision 
for a 2020 decision. The decision is simply this. I know it's hard. Our normal has been turned upside down. And for those of us who the most experienced folks in faith sometimes have to wonder, God, what's going on? God, what is it about this year? Everything is so different. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even really get to see my son graduate from high school because, you know, we traded in tassels for masks. <sighs> But the simple fact of it is, is that he's still sitting on the throne. And that despite what you may be going through right now, some of you are depressed. Some of you don't know which way to go. Some of you don't know how you're going to make ends meet. Some of you right now don't know exactly what you're going to do. But I'm here to tell you. <clears throat> That some of you are about to walk into your promise, but it's time now for you to make that covenant with God. If you don't know him, it's time to get to know him. And it's time to make that covenant for those of you who have made the covenant. Because really what happened here was Israel had already made the covenant. They were renewing the covenant because Joshua knew by divine intervention because God spoke through him that the area and they, that they were about to go into, even though it was their promised land, it was a land full of temptation. It was a land full of things that could get their minds off of him. And if you keep reading on in Judges and for, for, so forth and so on, you will see that the Israelites turned away from God. I'm telling you right now, keep your vision on God. Keep your 2020 whether you like me and you got to put on glasses to make it 2020 again. I'm telling you right now, the decision for 2020 is to keep your eyes focused on Jesus. The 2020 decision is to get your covenant with God because the simple fact of it is is that God will keep you. God will protect you. God will will cover you. God will hold you. God will restore you. God is the one. He will never let you down. He's always there. 2020 vision for a 2020 decision. Thank you. That's the word. Keep your mind focused on him. Keep your mind focused on the one. The one that can keep you no matter what. 2020 ain't about an election. 2020 ain't about a pandemic. Pastor, Pastor if, you, if you listen last week, when I go back on Facebook and look at it, it's there. Go on our website, it's there. Whatsoever God will. This ain't the first time this has happened. Might be the first time in our generation, but guess what? We're still here. Guess what? We're still making it. Guess what? It might not be the same as it used to be, but to be quite honest with you, for some of us, it might be better that it's not like it used to be because God is ready to turn it around. He's ready to turn around a 2020 vision for a 2020 decision. Amen. I love you, Jesus. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more than me. I love you. Just 
just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Hey, yeah. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Amen. After hearing a word, 2020 vision for a 2020 decision. It's time for you to make a decision whether or not you, who you are going to serve. Are you going to serve the God or are you going to serve God's little G? It's time for you to make a decision. Can't you see the, the times are changing? Can't you see that the environment and what God is telling you to, to keep your sight on him? 2020 vision is what we've been talking about all year. Perfect line of sight towards Christ. You see, some people can have 2020 vision towards something else, but we are telling you now, keep it towards Christ. The door of the church is open for you to make a decision whether or not you're going to follow him. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, if I confess on the Lord Jesus Christ that he raised, that he died and he raised again, that you have to believe in that, then you shall be saved. Doesn't matter what you've gone through. Sometimes we think we're not good enough. We, we've been through too much. And so God is not going to like what we have to give him. God said, come to him. Come to him. Whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that's inside you, he will cleanse you white as snow. You just got to have the vision. You just got to have the vision. We thank God for the message and the messenger today. And as his other half have read the scripture and he has expounded on it, we hope that you have picked up on what God was trying to talk to him to you. And so, God, we thank you for joining us this morning. As we brought the word here at Agape Fellowship, where love is what we do. And we know that things are going on out there, but God says keep focused on him. All these other things are a distractor. And I like the way he put it. He said that it doesn't matter whether or not you're a Democrat or Republican, independent, or whatever you may be. Our candidate is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is going to be here November 3rd. He's going to be here after November 3rd. Just as the speaker said, he was here before. Before there was even time, he was here. Why don't you put your trust in somebody that you can trust? Somebody that will not lie to you. Somebody that will always tell you the truth. And even when you come to him and you're lying to him and you're not telling him what really is the truth, he already knows. And he can tell your story just like that woman of the well. And, and he said, oh, no, that, that's not your husband. And, and, and you've had many more. And she left from him going to tell, come see a man who told me all about myself. And I'm telling you right now, come see a man who can tell you all about your stuff. 2020 vision for a 2020 decision. And if all of you are at home, if you would stand, and you don't really have to stand, just sit there as we bring this prayer to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the word that you brought to us this morning that the way we can tell whether or not we can't see is through our spiritual eyesight. Father, we, we want to come to you now thanking you for what you have done for this ministry. Thank you for what you have done for all the ministers a part of this ministry. Lord, we thank you how Agape Fellowship continues to grow. And it's ironic because people will say, well, how are you growing? Because the doors are closed. As long as the word God is getting out from here, whatever type of vehicle, God, we've seen more and more people come and more and more people studying. You see, God, it's not about our building, but it's about you. And so, God, we want to thank you for just being God. God, we thank you today. And Lord, as we leave from this place and 
while we're still worshiping at our homes because worship ought not stop when this service stops, but worship keeps on going. God, we thank you. We glorify your name. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, may he rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us. Now, henceforth, and forevermore, and the children of God said amen, amen. and amen. And amen. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Welcome to Agape Fellowship, where love is what we do. We are a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, Bible-teaching church. Our mission is to exalt the Savior, exposit the Scripture, equip and edify the saints, embrace the Holy Spirit, and evangelize the sinner. Out of an abundance of continued safety as our state remains under a phased reopen approach due to COVID-19, our pastor, Reverend David C. Camp Sr. is encouraging everyone to join us throughout the week for the following virtual ministries. Start each morning with daily prayer at 9 a.m. by dialing 1-978-990-5000. Use access code 345-359. Join us on Facebook Live each Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for worship service. And each Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. for our live Bible study. Via our website, you can view pre-recorded Sunday school lessons for the week. And there are multiple ways you can worship through giving to include Cash App, PayPal, or by mail. If you desire intercessory prayer from a minister during Sunday morning worship service, dial 1 877 992 4273. For more information, visit us at www.agapefellowshipchurch.org. We thank you for joining us.